It was 32 degrees last night up on this hilltop, and guess what that means? It's time to break out the puffy jackets. We are going to show you the difference between the Patagonia Micro Puff, one of my favorites, and the new contender, the Outdoor Research Super Strand LT. You have found Explorer Trek Adventure with Kelly and Greg. We cover everything camping from backpacking to adventure vans. Having a proper layering system is super important whether you're car camping, but especially when you're out backpacking, you'll be able to change the number of layers you have on to fit the scenario, whether it be really windy, really rainy, or really hot. To give you some background into what I like and what I don't like, this is my current layering system. I always start with a sun shirt, and pretty much this is always on my body, whether it's 100 degrees out or 30 degrees out. It gives me sun protection, plus I have this nice hood. It immediately follows up with this Patagonia R1, and this is kind of my warmth layer, or at least the first warmth layer, and this layer is fairly snug and also has a hood. If you've noticed that all of these layers have hoods, and you would think, well, that's too many hoods, but honestly, if you can buy something with a hood, definitely do it because it adds just like way more warmth and way more options. Kelly and I have mostly the same layering systems and you can tell as we have the same colors and everything. Well, that's not because we like to look the same. That's because we're cheap and we like to catch everything on sale. Next up, we have the Patagonia Micro Puff. And this was a replacement for my Nano Puff, which I originally have. And this is a nice puffy layer and it is pretty warm. The last layer on the top is the rain and wind layer. And this shell is the Outdoor Research 4A2, I believe. Fits right over the top. And yes, it also has a hood. So this is my current layering system. Now let me take some of this stuff off and we can compare just the two jackets. But at least you'll know why I make some of the decisions or have some of the opinions I have. For reference, the Patagonia is the yellow one. The Outdoor Research is the blue one. The first thing we need to talk about is price because price is often a, one of the biggest factors for people to have. Using just retail prices, the Patagonia Micropuff comes in at $329, which is quite expensive. The Outdoor Research Super Strand comes in at $235, which is considerably cheaper. Yes, these are very expensive jackets, but you could potentially have them for a really long time, assuming you're going to take care of them. Price is important, but honestly shouldn't be your key factor when choosing your jacket. For me, fit and warmth are the two main deciding factors. Let me show you the fit. To give you a reference, these are both size large. Now, I find the Micro Puff to be oversized for some reason. Normally, Patagonia stuff is very slim fitting. I mean, it comes down halfway down my butt. It does have a nice cinch strap on the bottom, so it keeps the gusts from coming or keeps any air from coming in from bottom. That's nice. It just seems to be a little less snug here. But what it does give, it does give a plenty of room for several layers underneath. It's just when you're wearing this jacket by itself that it feels a little bit baggy. Both of these jackets have nice hoods and I have to say that the Patagonia is not the most flattering hood I've ever seen. But it is very snug and it comes up all the way to your chin. <laughs> Even though it's not the best looking hood, having it come up so high and then enclosing everything really does a good job of keeping the warmth in. And just to show you right now, I think this jacket is quite a bit warmer than the Super Strand LT. Even though I do say that this is a warmer jacket, the Outdoor Research, I actually find fits way, way better. And I actually prefer to wear this one, especially if you're gonna wear it by itself. It has a much more snug feel and it doesn't have that poofiness that the Patagonia has. You can see here, this is more form fitting. To me, this just feels like it's kind of part of me where the Micro Puff kind of feels more bulky. Let's look at the Super Strand LT's hood. It's definitely not as snug as the Micro Puff. I think the Micro Puff is actually listed as an under the helmet one, like if you had a, to use a helmet if you're rock climbing or something. And you can see that this one is a little bit bigger. <laughs> You notice when I put the hood on, it only came to right under my chin, which actually feels really nice, but in really cold weather, the Micro Puff is gonna keep your face a little bit warmer. Another reason why I like the Super Strand LT is it kind of feels like it could be an everyday jacket. And I actually will grab this out of the van if it's if we need to go somewhere, it's gonna be a little chilly. I'd way grab this one versus that one. And actually let's talk about one more point. 
This is 12D nylon, and the Micropuff is 10D nylon. And if you know anything about that, the smaller number, the, the thinner fabric. It's going to weigh less, which when it comes down to it, the Micropuff weighs about one ounce less. Pretty awesome if you're backpacking. But to me, it just feels super fragile. Even when I'm packing it up, I'm just like, okay, I'm super careful. I don't want to get it near buckles. This, it feels a little more robust. I did say they were about one ounce difference apart, but if you look at the men's medium Super Strand LT, it comes in at 10.9 ounces, and the Micro Puff comes in at 9.3 ounces for the same size. Retail price is often not the best indicator on if you should choose that dark jacket because this Super Strand LT I scored for 75 bucks from REI because it was a closeout on the colors. When they change years, they'll often get rid of certain colors and this was one of them, which I actually really like this color. And from 235 down to 75, I think that was a steal. This is from Patagonia's Warnware site, which is where they sell used gear. You can actually send your stuff to them. They'll buy it back and then resell it. They all, and they, the nice thing is, is they take pictures, they grade it. They're like, this is really nice. It doesn't have these flaws. This retails 329. I got this for a 197, which yes, still expensive, but saved a hundred bucks. We did a whole video on the Warnware site, how it actually works. We'll put that in the description, but this jacket, I think literally it was brand new. I couldn't find a single spot on it. Being in the Pacific Northwest, everything is wet and having synthetic insulation can be key. This is a super strand and I actually have a little pull here. Somehow I must have snagged on something and you can see the insulation is starting to come out. And they call this vertical X insulation. You can see how the insulation sits in the jacket. Both of these jackets have minimal stitching, but they manage to keep the insulation in place. Now the Patagonia has something completely different and they call it the plumafil insulation and it does its best to simulate reel down. You can see the stitching pattern is pretty minimal but it definitely keeps the insulation in place. There's no places where it's all bunched up. The plumafil definitely has a little more loft and it's kind of hard to see but there's a little bit of puff in each one of these little cavities. Where on the super strand jacket it really doesn't have that extra loft. Both of these jackets pack into the pocket, but when I pack this into my backpack, I actually just shove it in because this thing will fit into those little nooks and crannies. And when it's packed into the ball, it's just harder to fit in there. But let me show you how it fits into its pocket. As you can see, that's a bit of a struggle to get in there. There's not a lot of extra room, but it does pack down really nice. Same goes with the Super Strand LT. I would just shove this into my backpack. I wouldn't bother shoving it into its little container here. You can tell it zipped into its pocket because it has the zip poles on both sides. Let me show you how easy it is getting this one in. There it is all packed up. You can see it's longer instead of just a big square. And this definitely has a little extra room. It's not as tight as the other. Here you can see the size difference between the two. I think that extra insulation, the plumafil, just gives it that much more loft. This is so tight it's even hard to unzip. Both of these jackets are going to be fairly terrible at wind resistance. It basically just kind of goes right through them. So you'll definitely get a chill from that. Having that extra shell on the outside when it's really windy, super important. They are also not the greatest when it comes to repelling water. There's just not a whole lot there to repel the water. So if you know you're going to be in a downpour, you definitely need a shell. Minor sprinkles are not going to be a super big deal because this is synthetic insulation. So when it does get wet, it should retain most of its insulation power. But you definitely are going to need an outer hard shell. I just have the Micro Puff. It is um, my go-to backpacking heavy coat winter jacket. I do have the Nano Puff, which I love, but it does not have a hood. This is a woman's large. And I think that the women's is a little bit more fitted than the men's. When I look at Greg's jackets, I definitely think that the outdoor research is more of a slimmer fit. I really like this jacket. Yes, the hood is very funny on me as well. <laughs> I don't feel like mine is bulky. I don't know if it's because it's just the woman's or not, but I actually really like this jacket. I also got this jacket and the season sale at Backcountry, which is also another place to look for um, sale items, especially like at the, the end of season. 
Also, I did do a review of this versus my Nano Puff. We'll put a link in the description for that video if you want to check it out as well. Another factor to consider is warranties. And we've actually had to use the Patagonia warranty before. Kelly burned a nice hole in her jacket here and they actually replaced, well, they didn't actually replace it. We sent it in and they actually, somehow they sewed a whole new panel on there. We actually can't even see where they did it, but they did that all for free and they had a super great service. Now we haven't used the outdoor research warranty, so we can't speak on that. Now to wrap this up, who should pick the Patagonia Micropuff? And I think that is for the person who one, wants the lightest jacket possible, two, wants the warmest jacket possible, and three, wants a, a nice warranty, they're gonna have it forever. Who should pick the Super Strand LT by Outdoor Research? I think that is a perfect jacket for the person who wants to use it both backpacking and maybe they don't do a lot of backpacking or also maybe they don't do an extreme cold weather backpacking. Still a really great jacket and could be a great everyday jacket. The only thing you're gonna miss out on is a little extra warmth and a little extra weight savings. You're gonna get a little extra durability and you're also gonna save quite a bit of money. You can find us at exploretrekadventure.com. Go watch this video next and we'll see you next time.